Greetings to you brothers and sisters and welcome to this Bible study hour of Life Spring Assembly. It is a joy for us to come together again and study, give attention to God's word. And I am sorry today there will be no translation because our translator is <clears throat> not available for today's translation. But we will continue with the translation from next week. But uh, uh, please uh, forgive. And uh, those of you who understand English, uh, please listen very, very carefully. Now remember, we are in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And in our last study, we have gone through the introductory remarks of uh, this chapter. And uh, this chapter has to do, uh, to, to do with the how a person may be secure in Christ Jesus. And um, uh, there are certain Christian activities in which a person may be involved, but that does not to make him eternally secure in Jesus Christ. Uh, that becomes uh, our religious activities. And uh, like, for example, a person may experience the presence of a supernatural being and may be very gifted and active in the church. But these will not make a person, person safe and secure in Jesus Christ. And... Uh, a person may partake of the Lord's table and think he is secure in Jesus Christ. But taking Holy Communion will not to make a person safe and secure in Christ Jesus. And uh, then we, 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 I made a remark that how a person must run to win the race. And uh, in order to win that race, uh, he must run in discipline, in self-denial, and straining to control his life. And so chapter 10 enforces the point by using the nation of Israel as the prime example. And so that's what we are going to consider today. Um, let us first consider... Therefore, the first paragraph in the chapter, uh, that paragraph uh, contains 13 verses, verse 1 to 13. So I would like to read that passage for our advantage, for our benefit. This is what it says. Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud uh, and passed through the sea. All were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. But with most of them, in spite of all these advantages, it says, but most of them, God was not well pleased for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now these things became our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. And do not become idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Nor let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. Nor let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by serpents. Nor complain as some of them also complained, 
and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now all these things happened to them as examples and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape, uh, that you may be able to bear it. And uh, may our hearts be blessed by the blessed word of God as we read. And now let us consider, there are three points that we must consider from this passage. Uh, the number one is example of Israel. All shared the blessings of God among those who came out of Egypt. Verses 1 to 5. And uh, the second point is the warning itself. Verses 6 to 10. And the third point, receive the warning. Verses 11, 13. So this is especially uh, we must give heed because it says here, these examples of Israel were written down for our sake that we may also take warning lest we will perish on the way as they have perished. So that is the how to protect and so let us uh, first of all consider the example of Israel. All Israel shared the blessings of God. Everyone who came out of Egypt. All Israel came out of Egypt. And Egypt is a type of the world. You understand that. All Israel began journey to the promised land. And the promised land is a type of heaven. Our eternal abode. And all began to walk through the wilderness of the world with those who believed and trusted God. Now, the wilderness is, is, a, is, a, is, an, is a, a type of the world through which we are traveling towards our heavenly home. But as became evident, all were not genuine. They did not truly believe and trust those who came out of Egypt. They felt safe and secure because they were traveling with those who believed and trusted. And simply because they were in company with those who believed and trusted God, those who did not have that kind of faith or uh, depending on God, they took it for granted that they are also uh, entitled for eternal rest. But that was a false hope. Oh yeah, all were not genuine. They did not truly really believe and trust every one of them. They felt safe and secure because they were traveling with those who believed and trusted. And my friends, if you are a member of a family which follow Jesus Christ in obedience and in worship and in hope of his soon return, but you have not yet trusted God to be your Savior and Lord, don't take it for granted that because you belong to that family, you will automatically be is entitled for eternity and heaven. That will be a false hope. Because in God's uh, family, there are, there, are, there, is all, there are only children. There are no grandchildren. Uh, God has no grandchildren. He has only has children. And uh, it is a personal salvation. Every person has to experience this salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ personally. 
I cannot to do that with my on behalf of my wife. I have to trust God for myself. And my wife cannot uh, trust God on behalf of our children. Uh, that every child must personally trust. And so please don't deceive yourself that because you belong to a Christian family, you are automatically entitled for heaven. That is wrong. You have to personally experience Christ and commit yourself. But they were, they, but when we come back to the people of Israel, they were still in the wilderness, not in the promised land. While, um, please remember that, they were tra traveling through the wilderness. Wilderness included all kinds of dangers and uh, hindrances uh, that had to be confronted and conquered. Wilderness is not an easy, uh, easy place to be in. And uh, so as you travel towards the, pro as they were traveling towards their, their destination was the promised land. But uh, the wilderness journey came in between and uh, they had to conquer so many hindrances and so many dangers through that journey. And um, if they did not conquer, they would be destroyed by the wilderness. Wilderness has its challenges. And these challenges need to be confronted and conquered. And if we do not conquer these dangers, then we will be destroyed and perish. Israel enjoyed five uh, distinct and remarkable blessings and privileges to enjoy as they journeyed to the promised land. What a blessing. You know, when God allows a wilderness experience for some of his children, he also prepare some blessings that on which people can trust and be con and conquer the hindrances. Now, God always see to it that the believers have what is necessary as they journey through the wilderness of life. And one wonderful thing about our God, my friends, is our God is a living reality and he watches us and he sees what we need uh, to live a victorious life and he meets those needs, these blessings he gives. And that is one great blessing that we have. We always have a help. For the wilderness experiences, he has his provisions for us to face it and overcome. The number one thing is, there are five, I say, five distinct blessings necessary. Israel had the presence of God, number one. The presence of God himself, symbolized by the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire. God's presence and guidance. We will be lost without his presence and guidance. Exodus 13, 21 and 22. Exodus, let us turn to that. Exodus 13. Twenty-one and twenty-two. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, so as to go by day and night. He did not take away the pillar of cloud by day or the pillar of a fire by night from before the people. What a wonderful God we have and what a wonderful Savior we have. 
he not only forgives us and set us free from the power of sin and uh, give us a new life uh, by the righteousness of god uh, not only he gave but then for the continuous journey through this world he has provided his own presence to begin with more than anything else this is the greatest provision that god god's presence and guidance and it 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 is symbolized by the pillar of cloud for the day to protect them from the sun heat of the sun and a pillar of fire during the night to give us give them the light god's presence and guidance without that we would be lost his presence and guidance keeps us safe and secure that's what it say again exodus 14 uh, verse 19 and the angel of god who went before the camp of israel moved and went behind them and the pillar of cloud went from before them and stood behind them now this is to provide them protection from the pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers and soldiers coming behind them to recapture them and take them back to egypt oh yeah or they will be killed that was the danger what a marvelous god if you read that whole chapter 13 and uh, 14 you will understand what a you know they were at the, in a place and in a, in a such a situation that there was no escape route they were brought uh, right at the bank of the red sea so in front they have the red sea both sides they have this huge uh, uh mountain of rocks it is impossible to climb and so behind what the enemy pharaoh and his soldiers or army is coming so you are trapped no escape route but you know as long as you have the lord god almighty there is nothing to fear he can prepare a highway through the sea and that's what happened as you know and without his presence that was this without his supernatural presence and act of uh, dividing the red sea there were, would have been no escape and uh, in the same sea pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers and soldiers all were drowned and destroyed can you imagine a mighty nation you know those days of uh, egypt was uh, the the one of the most powerful em- empire and uh, pharaohs were very very world famous i can you imagine such a mighty nation the nation's king and the entire army perish in that in the in the red sea while the people of god who enjoyed the presence of the lord with them because of his miraculous act they walked through the highway through the red sea blessed be the name of the lord and the second thing is the second blessing was that they passed through red sea so the first blessing was god's own presence guiding them leading them protecting them and the second blessing was that they passed through red sea that is one of the supernatural miracles that ever happened 
This refers to the final and step in their separation from bondages and enslavements of Egypt, a type of the world. The passing through Red Sea, that was the final step in their separation from bondages and enslavements of Egypt, passing the Red Sea. Once they were on the other side, they were completely cut off from their land of slavery. And this also was their final step in their deliverance. They were completely de delivered. Remember that Egypt is a type of the world. And how these Israelites were slaves in Egypt. And as long as we are in this world, remember we are separated from the world. We still live in the world, though we are not of the world. And so we can expect hindrances and blockages and uh, temptations to turn us back. The enemy, the devil, will do everything he can to turn us back. And sometimes our situations may be such that there is no escaping the enemy's attack. And many have already fallen because they have lost their focus. And that is why it is very important for us to keep our focus straight. And we should never take our eyes off from our God and trust Him. Exodus 14 verses 13 to 31 you will read the miracle of crossing the Red Sea. Who provided that passage? None but God Almighty. No gods of Egypt could block them and stop them. And my friends, many times we face wilderness and we may even come to a place of no return and no escape. And that is where such is the kind of problems that can hit us in this wilderness journey, in this journey through the world. And that is when the enemy, the devil, will begin to celebrate his victory over by pulling us down many. And many in the past and even present day are falling away and giving up because they don't see any escape. But remember, our focus should not be distracted. We keep on trusting and in obedience we move forward. That's what God said to Moses to tell the people of Israel. They were grumbling, they were shouting, they were ready to stone Moses before bringing them into such a location from where they have no escape. Now what to do? Kill the leader. And the Moses was in great danger of uh, people threatening to kill him by stoning. Yes, that is the uh, You may be brought to such a situation. But why? It is in such a situation you will experience the supernatural of our God. You know, our God is not an ordinary God. He is supernatural. He sees what others cannot see. He does what others cannot do.
there is no other god like our god you can trust him he will never fail you he will never provide a he 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 will always provide a way of escape that's what we read in you know, one of these verses always remember he will never allow you to go through any temptation that you are not able to bear and even along with the temptation he also show you a way of escape he will provide a way of escape and so once they cross the river uh, this uh, this this uh, red sea their separation from egypt was complete and total and the third thing we must remember is this israel was baptized into moses and to his leadership moses was a type of christ always remember remember this is all used as a type in order to give us the new testament followers of christ a warning and also we may know how we are well protected and provided and we just have to keep our focus on god and so remember moses was a type of christ israel needed a leader to lead lead them into the promised land any person who followed moses through the red sea and under the cloud was baptized and given over to moses and his mission now what is his mission is lead the people of israel further away from egypt which is a type of the world nearer to the promised land and such a person was proclaiming that he was a follower of moses and his mission to reach the promised land anyone and that is what it means they followed moses through the red sea and under the cloud and that was a type of being baptized and given over to moses and his leadership and may god now help us as we follow jesus christ remember who is our leader the lord jesus christ and the blessed holy spirit covering us providing all that is necessary for us to have in our lives spiritual power spiritual weapon and the ability to use the spiritual weapon as we battle the enemy and as we face the threat from the enemy the devil almost we are destroyed but at that moment the supernatural power of the one whom we follow is manifested it is always there for us you simply trust god hallelujah and we are on our way we are pilgrims and we are strangers in this world that's what the bible says but we, it is full of dangers and uh, full of opportunities to turn back and uh, is a place where we are afraid at times the danger because of the dangers but god says you don't have to worry just keep listening to him and obey you know standing at the red sea god told moses to tell the people go forward go forward forward into where into the sea going forward for the people of israel at that spot was going into the sea and that's what they did none of them not a single one of them perish there are thousands of cattle and sheep and all and small children boys and girls not a single life has been lost through that dangerous thing 
And fourthly, in the wilderness, Israel partook of God's miraculous provision of food and water. As we know the story, you read the book of Exodus, it's full of that. Um, how God marvelously provided a heavenly meal for them and meat. And where there was no water, he provided water from the rock. My friends, the, the word spiritual simply means that these provisions came from God. You know, whatever comes from God has a spiritual meaning. Whatever comes from God, it has to be spiritual. There is nothing worldly in it. And therefore, that has the heaven's blessing and heaven's power when you partake of it. And God provided their need and took care of their day-to-day -day necessities. What is day-to-day -day necessities? Food, water, and healing, and uh, protection. You read Exodus chapter 16, verses 4 to 8, and the, the same chapter, verses 11 to 15, and then chapter 17, verse 6, and also Numbers chapter 20, verses 1 following. And read these passages, my friends, and you will, you will see how marvelously God provided. And the fifth thing is, they had the presence of Christ. Presence of Christ. How? The rock that provided water is said to have been Christ. As Christ is called the rock of ages. Hallelujah. And it is on that rock we stand. And there we have all the provisions. Jesus Christ have been the source, the energy, the power, and the person. And this Christ which followed them, the rock, caused the rock to gush forth water, caused the Red Sea to roll back, caused the manna to rain down. Oh, what a marvelous, this Christ, this rock, Jesus Christ who followed them, he provided all these things for their maintenance, sustenance, and protection, and strength and hope. And Christ is the one who gave Moses and to Israel guidance through the wilderness. Gave them the promise of a promised land. Hallelujah. And in closing, let me say this. What is Paul's point here that he's making? The passage we read. Paul is making a point here that Jesus Christ is the Jehovah of the Old Testament. He is called the rock. Deuteronomy 32, 4. It was he or our Lord and Savior who guided them, provided for them, protected through Israel's wilderness journey to the promised land. It is he. And the same Jehovah God is with his people, with his church, guiding them, leading them, protecting them, providing for them, and miraculously. And so God's people, the church, always can experience the miraculous, the supernatural. Hallelujah. And that rock was Christ. Blessed be the name. He is still the same. He has not changed. 
He is now with his church. Hallelujah. Through the Holy Spirit, we may experience Christ's own guidance and leadership. And he shows us the light and he enlightens us. And he guides us. He provides. You can trust him. Israel is our example. In spite of all their failures, their unfaithfulness, constant grumbling and, and criticizing and ready to kill Moses, God's servant, they are not worthy for any blessing, but God in his mercy has kept on providing for them. But we as children of God through the blood of Jesus Christ, oh, my brothers and sisters, how much more he loves us and cares for us. If he was, he did not give them up in spite of all their unfaithfulness. He kept them because they bore his name. And how much more we who carries and who bears God's name. We are Christians. Christ plus man is a Christian. Thank God, this Christianity, therefore, can trust our God. He will never leave us nor forsake us. As long as you do not forsake him and leave his presence, get out of his protection and provisions and miraculous. That is when God's people get into trouble. So stay on. Keep looking on him. The rock of ages. Let us learn to stand on that rock and we shall not be moved. God's blessing be upon you as you live your life this coming week. Oh, my brothers and sisters, this God never changes. Glory be to God. Amen.